Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.05 here on Telegraph Hill and it is the final Tuesday in the month of November and that means it's time once again for Cop Talk brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. I'm AJ Brammer and joining me in the studio as always is Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston and Jefferson County Sheriff John Walls. Chief Sheriff, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Good morning. It's always our pleasure. AJ, thanks. Yeah, well we definitely always appreciate you guys coming on the program. So uh, diving right in, month of November What's new with you guys' offices and departments? Well, we welcomed uh, Philip Wimpy back from the academy. He went uh, to the Southwestern Indiana Law Enforcement Academy in Evansville. He graduated on November 11th, so we're glad to have him back. Proud to announce that he was uh, president of his class. Uh, just missed by a few percentage points of uh, the academic award and also um, the Top Gun Award. He uh, finished in a tie. It was kind of an interesting story. Uh, he finished in a tie, so to to um, figure out the tie, to figure out who the champion would be. They, they put him in simunition gear and had him back to back and do the 10 paces turn and fire, best three out of five. And unfortunately he came up a little bit short there, but we're proud of him. We're proud of his accomplishments while he was at the academy. And he's now in our uh, FTO program with uh, Patrolman Brian Wyatt. Um, Patrolman Wyatt uh, had some extensive training in the FTO program, conducting conducting an FTO program, and really it's the first time we've had an official FTO program uh, at the Madison Police Department. So we're looking forward to that and the results of uh, of getting him trained on our um, SOPs and procedures and getting him familiar with with working the roads, so we can uh, get him out on his own. and and uh, we're excited to have him back. We think he'll do a great job for us. Man, it's excellent to bring uh, somebody on board and to bring somebody as that performs as well Ab- as absolutely yeah fresh blood and fresh ideas are always good and, and we're glad to have him that's excellent and I'm yeah congratulations patrolman Wimpy. it sounds like he did everything but serve uh, lunch for him or cook lunch. <laughs> i think he drove the bus <laughs> i think he did yeah yeah he's an outstanding young man and, and a great addition to the madison police and to our law enforcement community so uh, we're all very glad to have him on board as well and to lead into that uh, the jerson county sheriff's department is uh uh conducting uh, interviews or we'll be conducting interviews for applicants uh, we'll be uh, going through the hiring process here within the next month uh, applications are due back on the uh, on the 9th of December so you can pick those up at the uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department um, and have those returned by the 9th they're, they're pretty extensive to fill out so you, you may want to grab one quickly uh, and get it back and uh, and hopefully go through the process with us uh, we're also getting ready to hire additional jail staff as well so if uh, you know jail officer position is something that uh, that interests you um, you know please come down and fill out that application as well you know, fortunately, the uh, Jefferson County Council has approved additional jail staffing and, uh, and an additional officer for the department uh, as of January 1st. So um, we're going through that process and, and looking forward to uh, getting these applicants back, their applications back, and, and going through the process. Uh, the additional help is uh, much welcome and needed. So well, one department expanding, the other department looking to expand. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I would expand on that jail officer position. Um, that's a great um, introduction to law enforcement. So if your long-range career is a police officer, it seems uh, almost all the, the police officers that we've hired at the Madison Police Department that came from Jefferson County Jail or the Marion County Jail, wherever they came from, uh, have been excellent officers just because they have that inside knowledge of criminal, you know, the criminal mind, the criminal element. Uh, and if they're local jailers, they know um, who they hang out with, who their partners are, who um, their spouses are, or uh, they just have that inside Side knowledge that you really can't get anywhere else, and they they tend to make very good police officers. It gives us an opportunity to uh, to get to know them, and uh, and vice versa, and also gives that uh, that young man or lady in the uh, in the jail staff position some idea about what law enforcement's all about, and to determine if that's you know what their career wants to be down the road. So it's a uh, as the chief stated, it's a very good uh, very good starting point. So I would encourage you if uh, you know. Don't get discouraged if you don't get hired as an officer right away. And if you are interested in law enforcement, uh, uh, the jail staff is a good place to start. That's, like you said, an excellent opportunity to uh, get involved serving the community and uh, get involved with law enforcement. Mm-hmm. Well, as we um, we hit the month of November and uh, December right around the corner, this is the state of Indiana, so we can't guarantee that the weather will turn quite the way we expect it to. <laughs> you never quite know living around here. But we are anticipating, you know, the the cold weather, the snow, things like that is just around the corner. Right. The, you know, the saying in Indiana is if 
if you don't like the weather, just wait about 15 minutes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's probably going to change. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, you know, winter driving, extra stopping distance, uh, making sure your, your vehicle is packed with um, blankets and, and things in case of an emergency, in case of a slide off. Um, but, you know, we seem to talk about this every year, but at the same time, it becomes an issue every year. We, we have snow accidents. So, yeah, take your time and, and uh, allow yourself uh, plenty of time to get where you need to go. Yep. Preparation is definitely the key. Um, like I said, slow down and uh, allow yourself more more opportunity, more travel time to uh, to get to your destination. I think that's probably the uh, the key factor. Is uh, we want to leave at the same time as we normally do every day, and uh, conditions are are certainly different. So um, yeah, we always want to allow yourself a little extra travel time. But you're right; it's uh, it's right around the corner, and uh, we don't know which morning we're going to wake up, and it's it's going to be here. But it's uh, we know for sure it's certainly going to happen. So uh, uh, we certainly want everybody to play it safe. And uh, as we you know, as the temperatures do start to drop and we hit the winter weather, you know, not everybody in the community is fortunate enough to have you know a home to go uh, a home a roof over the head every night and but i know both of you guys' offices are teaming up with uh, a couple other local people to help support people yeah it's uh, the warming centers are steerheaded by the uh, salvation army in conjunction with uh, with several of our local churches and, and organizations and the jefferson county sheriff's department and the madison police are participating as well um, if you need any information or a warm place to stay anything below 40 degrees uh, the warming stations will be open uh, contact the salvation Army and they'll give you directions on on uh, where to go and, and how to get there. They'll provide rides uh, and I believe it's at four four o'clock that you check in there and they'll provide your ride to the warming station. If it's after four p.m. and you need a ride to that warming station, you can call our non-emergency lines at the uh, sheriff's department and the city police, which is a eight one two two six five three three four seven or eight one two. Two six five two six four eight, and a uh, police officer either city or county will uh, come and pick you up and, and provide you transportation to that warming center. You know we certainly don't want anybody to uh, jeopardize their health or uh, from hypothermia out here on our streets. So you know please give us that call and if you need that assistance, we're gonna we're gonna be there to help you. It's uh, something we started uh, really in earnest last year, and um, you know we found it was utilized. Unfortunately, you know there are folks out there that uh, do need places to stay, but uh, we're certainly here to help you, and uh, that's what. Uh, it's what we're all about, and uh, and that's uh, you know what we're expected of us. So we'll uh, we'll certainly be here to, to give you a helping hand. Don't hesitate to give us a call. Anything that is that, Chief? No, not really. Uh, just um, I, I think sometimes maybe there's a, a mistaken thought that uh, they, people in that situation should be embarrassed, and there's no reason to be embarrassed. It, it it is what it is. That's your situation, and we're here to help in any way we can. We we don't view those uh, anybody in that situation any different. So we're here to help in any way we can. Person County Sheriff John Wallace. Uh, Sheriff Chief, as we were just talking, we were talking a little bit about, about you know, the season is turning. We are heading into the month of December, but that does also mean that we are heading into the holiday season. So a lot of people are going to be doing some shopping. So as what comes with that, we want people to be you know safe with their packages. Yeah, absolutely, AJ. Um, we noted last year that we had a, a number of packages stolen from front porches of uh, folks in which they have their uh, items delivered to their residence. Uh, so far, knock on wood, we haven't received a lot of reports of that yet this year, but uh, but it was an issue last year, and, and we anticipate it could be a problem again. Now, this is where, like I said, the, uh, the delivery trucks drop it off, and uh, you may not be home at that time. We encourage everybody to maybe make some plans on having that package instead of delivering it at an occupied residence. Maybe have it delivered to your work if you can, if you can do that, or to a friend house or or have somebody come by and pick that package up uh, uh, shortly after being delivered uh, we certainly don't want your items taken from your from your front porch after you've worked so hard throughout the year and uh, and made that purchase we don't want some thief to come by and, and take them and 
and uh, and unfortunately that's been the case uh, oftentimes they'll watch these delivery trucks go back into uh, neighborhoods uh, they'll watch where they drop off packages and then follow up uh, with their thievery and uh, and take those items from your front porch so we encourage you to make uh, alternate plans and, and have those delivered someplace safe so um, you don't lose that on on any funding and uh, you don't have to go through the headache of, of ordering that again well as the sheriff said obviously you know we we haven't had many reports of that up till now but then again cyber monday was just yesterday so uh we know uh we see the statistics that every year uh online shopping at this time of year increases it seems like people are staying away from the malls and shopping from the convenience of home and so now is the time when those deliveries will be taking place for the next several days so um yeah um we will try to be vigilant on our end um but at the same time you know um you as a consumer need to uh, uh, take precautions a, as best you can on your deliveries. Yeah, vigilance is a good term to use. Uh, we ask, like you know, that. yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, we ask folks back in the uh, in the neighborhoods to, uh, if you are home, to keep an eye on your neighbor's house and uh, and look for suspicious vehicles back in your neighborhood. A lot of times, uh, you're our best ally because you know who's who belongs back there and who lives back there and who doesn't. So, if you see uh, someone acting suspiciously or a vehicle driving through very slowly, uh, uh, please give us that call so we can check that out. That may be the call that we need to thwart uh, any kind of theft situation that may be occurring. Also, um, like I said, it is the holiday season. It is a time of a uh, joy and, uh, and thankfulness but uh, it also is the opportunity for uh, thieves and, and uh, people who enjoy uh, you know taking your hard-earned money away from you are also at full force as well so if you are out shopping you don't want to leave those packages uh, you know visible in your cars or in the back seats where an opportunist can uh, take a chance of uh, breaking in your vehicle and, and again stealing your packages so just an ounce prevention will uh, will go a long way and uh, and keep your holiday safe and enjoyable I mean, kind of going off of that in terms of the you know, idea of prevention like you said it yesterday was cyber monday today is a uh, giving tuesday a lot of people you know contribute to different yeah were you un- <laughs> were you unfamiliar with giving tuesday sheriff <laughs> <laughs> I did. yeah i mean we got a, we got something for every day now. Yeah. I, did. I like it i, I mean, thought it was yeah, cop that, talk tuesday yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no that <laughs> is certainly a, that too but yeah but anyway so yeah it is a day where a lot of people you know make a, contributions to different sure. organizations yeah. But kind of going off that, we talk about the security of it, and especially cybersecurity yeah. has been a topic I feel like this past year we've talked about quite a bit. It's still a time, this is also a time of year where people are, you know, trying to take advantage of people's kindness. So if you're, if you're going out on the internet, you want to make sure you're uh, verifying where you're sending your money to. Well, and it's also scamming season, you yeah. know, because uh, the scam artists understand that it is the giving time of the year. People tend to give more, and they're th- more thankful for what they have, and more apt to give to charitable uh, um, companies, charitable donations. So um, they're looking to take advantage more than ever. So definitely uh, do your research before you give any information and and uh, uh, resources to to these companies. And at the same time, like you said, uh, be aware of websites and cybersecurity as well. Absolutely. That's one thing I'm really proud of the the word uh, like the your program and uh, other so other media and social media that we've been able to get the word out to, about these scams because uh, there for a while they were really prevalent and uh, and unfortunately uh, people are losing, you know, significant amounts of money through them. Folks are catching on very well now. If they're not sure, they're not giving. Uh, and as the chief said, you want to verify before you give. If it's a call to one of us, we'll be glad to, to follow up and, and check it out. Uh, when I do get those calls, I always call that number back in which uh, they received a call from, and usually I get hung up on. So uh, that pretty much indicates right there it's a scam. But uh, <laughs> but always double check and verify. Uh, you certainly uh, we certainly understand the uh, feeling of wanting to give, especially this time of the year. But we don't want you to uh, to be scammed. So just verify if it's a legitimate organization. They can certainly wait uh, a couple hours or a day to, to receive that donation. So, as the chief said, make sure you always verify. It's definitely very important. Uh, another thing that we were talking about, kind of segueing away from the uh, the holiday season, different things that go with that. Um, Sheriff, we were talking during the break about the uh, the current jail population, is, which we, we, we knew it was going to be over capacity. Yeah. But um, you also had, a, kind of going off of that, um, some other statistics about. Yeah, our jail population right now, it's uh, it's the highest it's ever been since since I've been sheriff. Uh, I think we're probably sitting around the 160 mark uh, wow. as we seek, uh, speak here this morning. Um, our population is 108, or our max is 108, so you can imagine uh, uh, how much, many 
more issues that creates having that many more inmates yeah. in our facility and again i can't praise the uh, jail staff enough for the job they do it's just uh just very difficult day in and day out just the logistics of uh of feeding 160 people or taking care of medical issues or getting them to and from court uh, and those type of things it's just uh, you know it's just unbelievable and then they they just do a remarkable job but uh, yeah majority 90 percent of it again is, is still still narcotics um I'd received a, a number yesterday uh, of the um, amount of people that have served prison time from Jefferson County over, say, the last 10 years uh, due to drug-related uh, issues, and that's risen 280% wow. over about the last 10 years of people serving prison time uh, from Jefferson County on drug-related charges. Um, you know, I think it goes back to when, when methamphetamine hit us. You know, that, uh, that certainly kicked things in overdrive. Um, you know the prosecutor's office they they do a fantastic job you know working the cases once we once we present it to them but initially it all starts with uh, with our law enforcement guys out there uh, busting their tails and, and, and hitting the streets and, uh, and making these narcotics arrest and, and making good arrests or otherwise they wouldn't be serving prison time so so really pleased and proud of um, of the entire criminal justice system on on how we've handled this onslaught of uh, of narcotic issues in our community and uh, and I know the chief agree if we don't uh, we don't keep our foot on the gas pedal and then continue to uh, to be aggressive toward uh, the narcotics in our community it uh, you know we'll certainly go downhill in a hurry and uh, and I think we've uh, thwarted that uh, to the best of our ability and and it's not only just law enforcement like I said the prosecutor's office has done an outstanding job and uh, and the community as well recognizing you know narcotic issues in their in their neighborhoods and in their communities and reporting to us so it's it's been certainly been a team effort um, i don't know it's a number that we're really proud of overall uh, it's uh, you know it's good that we're out there you know doing what we need to do but it's uh, you know it's unfortunate that it's uh, it's risen that much and that to me that's just a just a staggering number yeah, and those detectives that work those uh, uh, narcotics cases, and in the road patrol guys who are making traffic stops and interdiction stops, um, sometimes that's a thankless job. Sometimes that's a um, you, you wonder why you're doing what you're doing because it's difficult to. Um, sh granted, you, you make arrests and you get people locked up, but sometimes you feel like you're not making a dent in in it. But but they are. They're, they're making an impact on our right. community every time they make an arrest. Every time it's in the newspaper. Every time um, an arrest is made or an investigation is concluded successfully so uh, and prosecuted successfully as as the sheriff had said you know um, it, it's a team effort from the patrol to uh, detectives to the through the prosecutors judges everyone that's involved um, it, it's a team effort not one not one part of that team can survive without everybody else so uh, it is a team effort and they are making a great impact on our community yeah. you know and I want to say you know and the chief hits on a good point sometime it is uh, difficult when you get out and uh, and you're making these arrests continuously and you're wondering you know where's the end and those type of things but uh, but often we do get uh, the detectives get or, or we get uh, emails or phone calls from uh, from folks that we have dealt with uh, in a not so positive way in the past where we arrested them for narcotic issues and uh, and they'll actually call us up or send us a letter and, and thank us so they'll tell us that was the that was the moment that turned their life around and now they've been you know they've been sober or clean for you know whatever a year or two years so it does make a difference so there is a purpose of incarceration out there and uh, and we've seen it happen you know we would encourage you know like to see that uh, you know happen more often but uh, but it but it does happen and and there are programs out there in place we do have programs even in our county jail that uh, that aid and assist uh, uh, people in, in the facility that uh, that do want to turn their lives around or do want to get off the drugs or off the alcohol so um, you know we start at the local level and uh, and I know the state has done a uh, has done a good job as well as far as implementing additional programs in our correctional facilities to to help folks uh, you know not only with drugs but just dealing with life in general so, you know, I don't want to leave this message here today saying it's, you know, it's a downer and all we're doing is making arrests. There are other avenues out there that we're trying as well. We're also trying on the flip side to help people turn their lives around through uh, through different programs. Oh, that's certainly true. And I think it was, I think one of the judges locally told me that Jefferson County, the, the courts in Jefferson County are the eighth most um they have the eighth highest caseload of all 92 counties in Indiana. So, like you said, like you guys said, you guys is, are always constantly working. But on the other side, the prosecution side is always constantly working too. And 
on one end it is indicative that you know obviously we're dealing with a lot of narcotics cases but it is also indicative of the fact that you know you guys are working so hard to try and address it yeah it's true and then and, and, you know the, the courts they do work very hard i mean it's uh you know we were in there day in and day out and, and watch the judges and their staffs work and they uh, they're very dedicated uh, people and, and they do work very hard and i know the ideal of the thoughts are it's being looked into to actually add a, a magistrate to the courts which is uh you know in my opinion very much needed uh that reflects back onto the uh probably the overpopulation of the jails as well i mean you've only got two judges you can only get three things through so fast so with that magistrate that would certainly make a make a difference in in, in speeding things along so to speak so um, you know hopefully that's something that uh, that we'll address here in the near future and uh, you know kind of pick up the pace a little bit so to speak and uh, and maybe alleviate some of that jail issues Uh, Sheriff, as we get ready to wrap up the program, uh, we actually have a, another guest in the studio, don't we? We certainly do. Our uh, school resource officer, Season Jackson, has just uh, came in to uh, pay us a visit. And, and I can't say enough about uh, about Season and, and Jacob McVeigh, our two school resource officers here in, uh, in Jefferson County. They, uh, they just do an outstanding job. And, and we were just speaking on making a difference in people's lives and uh and these two certainly do in and out of southwestern as well they they make a significant difference um, the issues that we deal with in school now um, are handled by them a lot of a lot of issues are non-issues because they thwart it before it even happens so um i can't say enough how proud i am of season and, and jacob on on the job they do well, thank you thank you very much we really appreciate it and uh, could you officer jackson could you just kind of talk about uh, as the sro uh what's your job entail well, a lot of people, I think, think that we're in the schools because the schools have a, a really big problem with crime, and that's actually not what we do there. Uh, we're not in the schools to arrest a bunch of children. Uh, we're not in the schools because, you know, there's a big problem with uh, drugs or, or guns or anything. We're actually there to develop a positive relationship with our youth, uh, to regain their trust back, to, to get them uh, to once again you know, to, to trust the police again, because I, I, that's a, a problem, you know, that the society has kind of gotten away, like drawn away from the police, you know, thinking that the police are negative now. So it's it's kind of regaining their trust again. No, that, that's, I hear I hear from kids all the time and talk about um and parents as well, just how uh, it is a positive influence having you guys in the school system. So, it's good. Uh, yeah. That's good to hear. I hear <laughs> I'm sure that's good for you to hear. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes. yes. And also, uh, Chief, oh, good for good for you to hear good reviews, right? Absolutely. Um, with my wife having been a teacher at the junior high, uh, I have contact with a lot of the staff there and it, it, it seems like every time I do there's some sort of positive comment about uh, Sergeant Jackson and the job she does so uh, I appreciate that and and uh, I appreciate uh, the fact that as she's already mentioned she is making great impact on our children and I think uh, we will not see maybe the fruits of her labor until many years down the road and um, I'm excited about that that's going to be great for Madison and Jefferson County you know, in the last, uh, last week, the uh, eighth graders at the junior high actually had a, a breakfast for law enforcement and first responders at the junior high. And I'll tell you, those kids were absolutely tremendous. I, I was just taken aback by their generosity and how polite they were and how sincere they were. And during that uh, breakfast, they also recognized the uh, uh, season and officer jackson and officer mcveigh for the for the job they do and i'll tell you the admiration that they showed in their eyes and in the way they reacted toward these two officers uh, said it all it just it tells the chief and i that this this program is really working out very well again like i said we're super proud of these two so you know as you go to as you go into your job every day uh, what would you say has been your biggest takeaway of working as the sro well to be honest when i first uh, got the position i was terrified uh, <laughs> as a police officer you know to think of you know going into a, a middle school or a junior high most police officers that would be their worst nightmare and you know it was it was very scary the thought of it and uh, once i started and and gotten in there and, and kind of got used to the, the what i would consider controlled chaos you know it was I, I loved it i loved every bit of it you know those kids are awesome in there and the, the energy that they have just brings energy to you and it's just amazing just to be around them and it's not it's not crazy like you would think it's it they're just awesome kids they really are and it, it's just awesome to go to work and just be around them all the time that's excellent you know you're like we talk about it's been a 
really positive influence on so many kids so i imagine being a part of that's got to be really they, exciting <laughs> and they've been a positive influence on me so no that's I, excellent yeah. but that's sergeant jackson thank you so much for uh, coming on the program we were happy thank to you anything else you'd like to add before we go uh, not that i can think of <laughs> 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 well, you thank you. <laughs> we like uh, to, if you got a plug for a sports team uh, we <laughs> this is the time to get it in the last couple minutes of the program well i, w I was hoping they would win last night <laughs> well, there you go <laughs> Thank you. Sergeant Jackson, the uh, school resource officer for Madison Schools from the Madison Police Department. And uh, Chief Thurston, anything else you'd like to add before I, we go? I have two things I want to say. Uh, one, uh, Ray Black and the Boys Club has worked very hard for uh, Coalition for Teens in uh, trying to bring um, some attention to the, the struggles that they face. Um, we've seen teen suicide on the rise. We've seen teen drug use on, on the rise. And uh, he's... Uh, working very hard to band a lot of people in our community to see what kind of impact we can have. Uh, and his group meets tonight at 6 p.m. at uh, City Hall. And it would be great to see, uh, you know, as many people turn out as possible. We're open to ideas. Um, and and I just wanted to, A, recognize his efforts, and B, uh, invite the community to come out to that event. Another thing I want to mention, uh, 24 years ago today, I began my career with the Madison Police Department. Wow. Today's my 24-year anniversary, so I'm excited about that. I've been able to serve in a, in a lot of roles from patrolman up through the um, supervision uh, ranks and uh, as a crime scene technician, as a DARE officer, and now uh, as chief of police, and it's been extremely rewarding. So um, it's a good day to celebrate. That's excellent. No, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and. Uh, Sheriff Wallace, anything else you'd like to add to that? Well, it goes by fast, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does, yeah. This year I hit my 30th, so it, wow. uh, it's amazing how fast they go by. But I think probably the most amazing thing is I haven't changed. I pretty much still look the same as you I did. Do. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it is a very rewarding career and um, and uh, very appreciative of the, of the opportunity just to get to serve our citizens. So uh, wish everybody uh, the happiest of holidays, and, uh, and please be safe out there. All right, Sheriff, Chief, Sergeant, thank you guys so much for coming on the program. That said, thank you, Je Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace, Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston, and Sergeant Sergeant Jackson from the School Resource Officer for Madison Schools. Big thanks to all of them for coming on the program today for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. That'll do it for this month's edition. We'll be back again in the month of December, our last edition of Cop Talk for 2016. Hard to believe it's already here. Big thanks to you, the listener, for tuning into the program, and big thanks to Anderson's Sales and Services for sponsoring the program. And big thanks once again to our guests on the program today. Now we're going to throw it into the holiday music here on Works 96.7 WORX. I'm AJ Brammer. Thanks for tuning in.